Slaves of Fashion by Oscar Wilde. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Miss Leffler Arnim's statement in a lecture delivered recently at St. Saviour's Hospital that she had heard of instances where ladies were so determined not to exceed the fashionable measurement that they had actually held on to a crossbar while their maids fastened the fifteen-inch corset has excited a good deal of incredulity but there is nothing really improbable in it from the sixteenth century to our own day there is hardly any form of torture that has not been inflicted on girls and endured by women in obedience to the dictates of an unreasonable and monstrous fashion in order to obtain a real spanish figure says montaigne what a gehenna of suffering will not women endure drawn in and compressed by great koshas entering the flesh nay sometimes they even die thereof a few days after my arrival at school mrs somerville tells us in her memoirs although perfectly straight and well made i was enclosed in stiff stays with a steel busk in front while above my frock bands drew my shoulders back till the shoulder blades met then a steel rod with a semicircle which went under my chin was clasped to the steel busk in my stays in this constrained state i and most of the younger girls had to prepare our lessons and in the life of miss edgeworth we read that being sent to a certain fashionable establishment she underwent all the usual tortures of backboards iron collars and dumbs and also because she was a very tiny person the unusual one of being hung by the neck to draw out the muscles and increase the growth a signal failure in her case indeed instances of absolute mutilation and misery are so common in the past that it is unnecessary to multiply them but it is really sad to think that in our own day a civilized woman can hang on to a crossbar while her maid laces her waist into a fifteen inch circle to begin with the waist is not a circle at all but an oval nor can there be any greater error than to imagine that an unnaturally small waist gives an air of grace or even of slightness to the whole figure its effect as a rule is simply to exaggerate the width of the shoulders and the hips and those whose figures possess that stateliness which is called stoutness by the vulgar convert what is a quality into a defect by yielding to the silly edicts of fashion on the subject of tight lacing the fashionable english waist also is not merely far too small and consequently quite out of proportion to the rest of the figure but it is worn far too low down i use the expression worn advisedly for a waist nowadays seems to be regarded as an article of apparel to be put on when and where one likes a long waist always implies shortness of the lower limbs and from the artistic point of view has the effect of diminishing the height and i am glad to see that many of the most charming women in paris are returning to the idea of the directoire style of dress the style is not by any means perfect but at least it has the merit of indicating the proper position of the waist i feel quite sure that all englishwomen of culture and position will set their faces against such stupid and dangerous practices as are related by miss leffler arnim fashion motto is il faut souffrir pour être belle but the motto of art and of common sense is il faut être bête pour souffrir talking of fashion a critic in the pall mall gazette expressed his surprise that i should have allowed an illustration of a hat covered with the bodies of dead birds to appear in the first number of the woman's world and as i have received many letters on the subject it is only right that i should state my exact position in the matter fashion is such an essential part of the mundus muliebris of our day that it seems to me absolutely necessary 
that its growth development and phases should be duly chronicled and the historical and practical value of such a record depends entirely upon its perfect fidelity to fact besides it is quite easy for the children of light to adapt almost any fashionable form of dress to the requirements of utility and the demands of good taste the sarah bernhardt tea gown for instance figured in the present issue has many good points about it and the gigantic dress improver does not appear to me to be really essential to the mode and though the postilion costume of the fancy dress ball is absolutely detestable in its silliness and vulgarity the so-called late georgian costume in the same plate is rather pleasing i must however protest against the idea that to chronicle the development of fashion implies any approval of the particular forms that fashion may adopt end of slaves of fashion by oscar wilde read by noel badrian county offaly ireland